Hello everyone, and welcome to the weird, scary, and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking into one of Puerto Rico's most infamous boxers, Rico Esteban de Jesus, who became a murderer. De Jesus was born on the 2nd of August 1951 in Carolina Petuo in Puerto Rico. De Jesus was a gym mate of William Denitez, who was the youngest world champion in the history of boxing and in 1996 was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Denitez is considered to be among the best Puerto Rican boxers of all time. Trained by Denitez's father, De Jesus fought in 62 fights, with his first fight as a professional boxer being against Puerto Rican El Tarita on the 2nd of October 1969 when De Jesus was 18, which he won in a knockout. In total, De Jesus won 57 matches, 33 of them by knockout, and lost only 5 matches. In 1971, his first child, Lillian, was born. However, De Jesus' career was fraught with problems. At the beginning of his career, he was smoking marijuana, which progressed to smoking cocaine, and by the 1980s, he was shooting up speedballs of heroin and cocaine. On the 17th of November 1972, he became the first boxer to defeat Roberto Duran of the Dominican Republic in Madison Square Garden in New York. Duran had held the world championships in four weight classes. In 1973, De Jesus' second child, Vivian, was born. On the 17th of May 1975, he lost against Colombian Antonio Cervantes in Panama City in a match for the WBA World Super Lightweight title. In the same year, his third child, Esteban Jr., was born. On the 5th of August 1976, at Lobril Stadium in Bayamon, Puerto Rico, he beat Japanese Guts Ishimatsu and won the WBC World Lightweight title. He defended his title three times on the 9th of October 1976 at Lobril Stadium in Bayamon, Puerto Rico against Hector Julio Mendina of the Dominican Republic. Japanese Buzzsaw Yamabe on the 12th of February 1977 at Lobril Stadium and again on the 25th of June 1977 against Mexican Vicente Mijares. On the 21st of January 1978 he lost his WBC World Lightweight title at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas against Roberto Duran of the Dominican Republic. De Jesus fought for the WBC World Super Lightweight title, which he lost against American Sal Mamby at the Metropolitan Sports Center in Bloomington, Minnesota on the 7th of July 1980. This was to be his final match. On the 27th of November 1980, Thanksgiving Day, while in his native Puerto Rico, De Jesus injected himself with cocaine and left in his wife Nelly's car to visit his family. On the way, he was involved in a traffic dispute with 18-year-old construction worker Roberto Cintron Gonzalez. During the dispute, De Jesus got out his .25 caliber pistol and shot Gonzalez in the head. De Jesus would later note during a TV interview that he didn't even know he had killed someone until his wife told him as he was high on cocaine. Gonzalez died on the 1st of December 1980. As a result, De Jesus, charged with murder, was sentenced to life in prison. While in prison, De Jesus excelled in baseball, making the Puerto Rican penal system all-star team three times. In 1984, he became a born-again Christian and became an Orthodox preacher. In 1985, De Jesus learned that his brother Enrique had died of AIDS. De Jesus had shared needles with his brother while taking heroin and cocaine. De Jesus tested positive for AIDS and symptoms of HIV began to appear while in prison. During his second request for a commutation of his sentence, Puerto Rican Governor Rafael Hernandez Colon commuted De Jesus' sentence on the 28th of March 1989. This was four years prior to the date that De Jesus would have been able to be considered for parole. 
He then began attending an AIDS clinic, a condition of his parole in an abandoned milk factory in Rio Peadres, Puerto Rico, which was converted into a rehabilitation center for drug addicts. Spending his last days with his family, he was visited by many celebrities, including Hall of Fame baseball player Orlando Gepeda, salsa musician Ceo Feliciano, and former boxing competitor Roberto Duran. De Jesus died of AIDS one month after his release from prison on the 12th of May 1989 at the age of 37. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. You'll also be seeing two other videos for you to check out. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.